Hello everybody, welcome to yet another video. Today I'm going to bring up something about uh, dummy loads and I'm building one. So first off, a great website for general tech info. If you go to their tech info link here at ankinamps.com, they've got a lot of white papers and technical Q&A that's great for amp, uh, uh, nerds like you and me. Uh, there is also a section about dummy loads and I'm going to build one. So I wanted to go over over exactly what I do. He talks a lot about dummy loads, reactive and resistive, and he has a nice paper on uh, reactive loads. We're doing resistive only. Um, so this is the schematics he's drawn up. He's made these available for people to use, but you should only build your own and not try and sell them without talking to him uh, uh, to make sure that you've got his permission. But if we look at this, we now can see uh, quite a few different variants of a simple uh, resistive circuit designed for dummy load. You can have a 4, 8, and 16 ohm version of a couple variations. You can have a 2, 4, and 8 ohm for a couple variations, and he's also got a couple variations of the 2, 4, 8, and 16. I decided I wanted that, uh, and I kind of went for the least complexity in the switch. It has a f an extra resistor or two, but since you can get a lot of these big 100 watt type resistors or so for about a dollar or two each online right now, uh, I decided to grab uh, several of those and build this one. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see. This is the one on the bottom right that I've built, and effectively you have a uh, an input right here goes to a switch over here and the switch has 16, 8, 4 and 2 ohms and that just really uh, the circuit loops all the way around if you select 16 but if you select 8 it kind of connects in here at this point sorry my clicker is being weird but it doesn't include the top part up here so that would then only close the circuit all the way around and each each switch further down ignores the left or that top part of the circuit and only goes from that next step down uh, and I'll show a little bit of this in the kind of when I put it out on the board here in a minute but uh, this was the one I built it came out great and uh, you'll see that uh, in the uh, following video uh, I also have uh, a little link at the end that shows this website and then I'll also give a link to the dummy load website I'm sorry I'm copying that right now uh, the dummy load website in general on top of his you'll, you'll be able to link to this anyway but I'll give them both in the video so hope everybody enjoys the video let me know what you think in the comments and uh, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like the video thanks okay I wanted to show off something else here that I'm going to be doing um, I'm building myself a dummy load and to make it kind of make sense I'm laying it out pretty wide here on purpose to give you an idea of what's going on so if you'll see here my ground is connected right here and that is then parallel if you can see the green and white I kind of separate those on purpose is paralleled with this guy so those are two 4 ohm resistors this is a 2 ohm resistor this is a 4 ohm resistor and this is an 8 ohm resistor the whole point of this is to create a uh, dummy load that is switchable between uh, 16, 8, 4, and 2. Uh, two 4 ohms in, par in parallel gives me the full 200 watts of uh, kind of coverage there. I'm trying to go mostly for 100, but these are all 100 watt resistors. Uh, and then uh, as I switch up, I add this additional 2 in here, so that goes from 2 to 4. Then I added another 4 here that goes to um, 16 or to 8, and then I go to that last 8, and I'm at 16. And the way this works is they're wired all in circuit right now, so if I were to touch this top one, hopefully you can read that, that comes up to 16 ohms about and I'm getting probably a bad connection but it's sitting around there when I get it right let me walk around the other side then I can show this a little better so if I come up to this and I touch this in we should now see that we have come on oh it's on millivolts I don't know how I did that that's why it's being weird all right, 16.5, as you can see, so that's good. So the idea is the switch just points itself in and breaks off other parts of the circuit. So if I didn't touch here, I instead get eight. And then if I touch here, I get four. And then if I touch here at the top of this one, I get about two here, two point something, 2.2. So the way that works then is you're creating a circuit between your ground and wherever this red point is connected. If I connect it just right here, it's just these two in parallel and I get the four or two point, the two, roughly two, right? And then if you come up to here, I'm now enclosing the circuit between here and these two to ground. And you just keep progressive with each switch, you're getting higher. So I'm gonna build a small metal uh, sheet, piece of sheet metal. I've got a nice plastic enclosure. It's kind of one of those electrical junction boxes. But I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a piece of metal that I will bend on the ends to give it a little bit of separation up off of the uh, bottom so that it can um, create, well, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, this might actually work better. I've been using this to kind of hold stuff, but I might actually use this instead. Um, I might just, you know, you basically I'll just put one, two, three, four, five of these resistors in a row, and we can kind of look at that. It's going to effectively, all it needs is just 
jumpering between these resistors and putting them in a nice line together inside of here and then hooking them up to an, a jack. So effectively um, it will look kind of like this. And of course I'm gonna need to wire the last two a little bit differently to get those in series, uh, the series and the parallel and all that kind of stuff sorted out right. But effectively I'd wire these two together and then I'd connect the ground up to a switch or a, a port thing here. I'm gonna put just a small jack in there and then I'll have to have a switch maybe on the side here that just kind of toggles between these different points here. And then it's just series, this goes to here, this goes to here, etc. And I just rotate around through. So uh, that may actually work if it'll fit in there. I'll have to play with that a little bit and see. But effectively, I'll show you guys the rest of the build as it goes. I should be able to fit this in something similar to this size, if not this. And I'm almost kind of thinking, oh, these are pretty wide. I may have a hard time because I don't want it grounding out to the sides. But I will screw, you know, some screws to these holes anyway. So my original idea, like I thought of having just a piece of sheet metal, might work as well. But uh, we'll see how this works out. And I'll uh, show you the video as it goes. All right, so if you look, I am done. This is pretty straightforward. I've just, uh, well, I'm putting a little shadow on it. Let me come around this side. So all I've really done is this is eight, this is four, two, four, four. So this is the, the I've just chained each one back to the next group, and these are paralleled. And as, as I mentioned, so each wire just goes to a different point of the switch, and I've kind of alternated them so it was easy to tell, red, green, red, green. I just used a lot of scrap wire, so nothing is... Uh, all one intelligent, consistent color. I just was trying not to, you know, use extra wire that I had to pull out of the thing. And then uh, over here, I've got a guitar jack, and then I've got a um, the switch. So all it is is really then I can just go ahead and kind of carefully close this up. And if you can see here, I've written down 16, 8, 4, and 2. And you can see here it's about 2.6 ohms there, which is close enough, I'm sure. This is 4.6. This is 8.6. And this is 16.8. So uh, as you can see, it's not exact, but again, speakers tend to be uh, variants anyway. The speakers will kind of give a dynamic load, which changes. So a dummy load doesn't give you the exact load as you'd get, but it will protect your output transformer if you're doing testing. So uh, pretty straightforward. Like I said, I just had a, an old plastic box I'd bought at one point and then never ended up using. So now I can just, you know, plug in a, an amp that has a certain output. And if I have anywhere between 16 and 2 ohms output, I can just crank it down to that exact one. And I'm in business. So there you have it. Pretty straightforward. And uh, hopefully you guys can see this project is something that's pretty easy to do as well. I'm going to put a link to or show off the schematic. I stole this from AkenAmps.com. And he says right on his schematics, you can use them for personal use as much as you want for this kind of stuff. Just don't try and resell them. So unless you talk to him, I'm sure. But anybody who is interested, there's a lot of different variants. I did one of them. I'll show you uh, in a little bit of an extra part as well. Probably as an intro to this video. But uh, let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns, put that in the comment section below. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, please. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and check out my Patreon off the main YouTube page if you want to support what I'm doing. Thanks. Keep your tubes biased hot and keep the jams coming.